According to ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle, excellence does not come by accident. It is achieved by habit and conscious commitment to one's goals and objectives. This has indeed been the operational philosophy of Mr. Babajide Olushola Sawunlu since he assumed office on the 29th of May 2019 as the 15th governor of Lagos State. Hitting the ground running, Governor Sawolu unfolded his administration's strategic development agenda, themes covering traffic management and transportation, health and environment, education and technology, making Lagos a 21st century economy, entertainment and tourism, and security and governance. All of these are geared towards achieving his Greater Lagos vision. With a craving to offer Lagosians progressive governance at its best, the administration has carved a niche for itself as a people-oriented and centered government. In less than three years, many people-oriented developmental projects transverse different parts of the state. They cover infrastructure, renewal and development, health care delivery, environmental regeneration, employment, upliftment of the youth, provision of security. These, among others, have created a sense of relief among citizens. Welcome. This is the Greater Lagos Vision of Plus TV Africa. I'm Love Ikuku Oyedoku. This episode features coronavirus delta variant spread, renewed calls to advert to protocols, insurance for Lagos civil servants, the provision of affordable housing for all Lagosians, reading Lagos of street beggars. <music> Have you been vaccinated against COVID-19? If not, another opportunity is here for you to do so. The Lagos State Government has resumed vaccination against COVID-19 with the Moderna vaccine. But if you have taken the AstraZeneca vaccine, you need not to take the Moderna. This should be taken seriously by everyone because the Delta variant is more contagious and death rate has continued to increase. The state's government has warned against negligence of precautionary health protocols such as regular washing of hands, using hand sanitizers, wearing a face mask, and avoiding crowded spaces. 135 deaths have been recorded from the current Delta variant wave of the pandemic. Lagos State is the epicenter of COVID-19 in Nigeria. The third wave has further put Lagos in the spotlight. The state governor reveals that the positivity rate of every 100 tests conducted currently stands at 12.1% compared to 1.1% at the end of June 2021. At the end of July 2021, it was 7%. We're now clearly in the middle of a third wave. From the start, Lagos State has been the epicenter of this disease in our country. And unfortunately, we still remain um, at that center, even during this third wave. Um, the test positivity rates that we're currently seeing now, um, the last time we had this um, press conference, we're suspecting I was getting about 7% 7, 7 then. Now it's about 12.1% from a 1.1% in June of 2021 meaning that for every 100 tests that we do, we get about 12 people that are infected um, and we continue to do the testing in large numbers. Governor Sawunlu attributes the trend seen in the third wave to non adherence to the health protocols designed to mitigate the pandemic. He reminds Lagosians of individual responsibility to fight and defeat the virus. He pleads with citizens to have themselves tested in any of the COVID-19 public test facilities and get vaccinated free of charge. We have identified that the third wave emerged on account of non-adherence to the laid down health protocols that was designed to mitigate the flow of the pandemic. For this reason, it is essential for me to once again remind all of us of the huge responsibility we have to contribute at fighting and defeating this virus. 
as a, as a state government, we have taken substantial step to arrest this third wave at its track. Most notably of them is our increased monitoring and enforcement impact upon by members of our incident command units. Unfortunately, we have recorded severe recalcitrance on the part of the public, which had led to a higher infection rate, which you are now recording at our various centers. We received a total of about 299,992 doses of the Moderna on the, on the 18th of August. And they announced that they were going to give us 601,000, um, but they've not given us the entire 601,000, you know, based on their own logistics, I mean, um, at the federal level. But we've received um, just a little over 300,000 um, right now. And I'm happy to announce that from Wednesday on the 20, 25th, we'll start, we'll commence the vaccination um, at over 150 centers um, across the state. The governor discloses that since the commencement of isolation of passengers from red-listed countries, Lagos State's response has successfully quarantined 4,448 passengers. This figure was at 19th of August 2021. Also, 58 have been identified who tested positive to the virus despite a negative test on arrival. He warns that severe sanctions await anyone who flouts the protocol of the federal government and state COVID-19 pandemic laws. Lagos had identified over 5,998 persons and we have successfully um, isolated about 4,500 of them from the red, um, red listed countries, uh, meaning that um, sadly about 1,000 people have also absconded you know, for one reason or the other. And, and, and so the, the COVID-19 protocols on mandatory isolation puts in place by the PTF um, were encouraging Nigerians um, to please still present themselves, you know, for this mandatory isolation. Um, if you disregard this protocol and you abscond, um, you're putting the rest of the country, you know, on a very big risk. And, and want to plead that people should um, not not do that because it's not it's not it's not it's not a decent thing and you might not feel the symptoms now but when you get home um if you are coming from those regions you are you can indeed infect you know your loved ones and members you know of the community regarding testing and treatment um and for us to be able to be able to better manage the pandemic uh, i'm sure you know that we have invested um, heavily on our lagos bio bank and we're, we're, we're the only ones, apart from um, a federal government agency, that have the sequencing you know, um, um, capability now. Um, so we can actually have um, um, a sequencing even after the positive you know, cases so that you know what strain of the, of the virus you have. Um, and, 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 and that is really, really helping us. You know, and it provides us with information on how to better manage the pandemic. You know, worldwide, there are different variants. Uh, the Delta variant happens to be the most prominent right now. And so we have the sequencing capability to be able to determine that indeed, if it was under the Delta variant you know, of the COVID-19 that you have. With a collective desire and joint efforts, we all can see the end of the virus. Housing is a basic necessity of mankind as recognized by the United Nations. In order to bridge the housing deficit in Lagos State, new housing schemes are being built already. They include the 360 units Lagos Homes, Igbagbo scheme comprising of 121 bedroom, 122 bedroom, and 123 bedroom apartments. There's also the Lagos State Affordable Public Housing Scheme, Tokwo Badagri, with 252 two bedroom flats, apartments, Others are Courtland Villas behind Alaji Femi, Okunu Estate, Igbokushu, Leki, and Leki Apartments, Ikate Elegushi. Plus, TV Africa accompanied the State Commissioner for Housing, Moruf Akinde Rufotai, to inspect the Odo Onosa Ayondelu housing scheme in Agboa Ikosi. Housing is a basic human need and lack of it is a second worst form of poverty known to man after the lack of food. Housing is also said to be the single largest expenditure for most households, yet 
One-sixth of the world's population live in slum as many developing nations like Nigeria and some developed nations, the vision of affordable housing for all remains a dream. Having a decent home and suitable living environment and no place to retire into after a hard day's job could be nightmarish and quite a big deal. Affordability of houses is one of the greatest problems confronting economic growth and sustainable development of our nation. But the Lagos State government is not leaving any stone unturned and has continued to provide affordable housing not only for its workforce but also to everyone residing in Lagos. The kind of homes that we deliver under some old law administration will make it livable. Will make it livable. And if you come in now, you see what we are talking about. The governor is interested in making sure that no matter where you live, you are proud of your environment. Commissioner for Housing, Mr. Moru Fatai Akinderu, who stated this while speaking with newsmen during the final inspection tour of the Agboa Ikusi project, cited in Ikorodu added that the scheme is targeted at low-income earners in the state. This place is particularly targeting first-time homeowners. And then the governor has magnificently approved that we subsidize this, that it will, it will go, it will, it, will, it will cover as many people as possible who are low-income earners. Sitting on a land area of 8.22 hectares, comprises of 70 blocks of four dwelling types of 660 units of bedroom block of flats with eight blocks of 192 units, 21 blocks of 252 units, 26 blocks of 156 units, 15 blocks of 60 units, totaling 70 blocks. We don't allocate until this, this place will, be, will only be allocated when it is commissioned. And um, again, we also always encourage people to go through the proper channel. The proper channel for this particular estate is not Minister of House, it's Lagos Mortgage Board. What you need to do is to present, fill the form, present yourself. Your, there are rules, like your work, or, uh, work, uh, work, uh, working information, your banking statement, and to be sure that 33.3 by the time they remove 33.3 percent from the from your from your salary, you the 66.3 that was uh, six that remaining uh, will take care of your need. You cannot sell it until after 10 years because we are really targeting. You pay over the next 10 years, so we target those who are. First time homeowners. It's for the teaming populace of the Lagos State. Anybody that having LASTRA, Lagos State Registration Card, is entitled to even subs subscribe to this uh, project. It's not for staff alone, it's all Lagos State residents. That's not all, as Governor Sawulu has also approved the construction of a 500 units of workers' village in Ayobo while another 500 units is also being considered at Imota. And if you are already thinking of how to become a beneficiary, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Housing, Wasiu Akinshola, provides details. Anybody that having LASTRA, Lagos State Registration Card, is entitled to even subs subscribe to this uh, project. For outside purchase, you come to Lagos State Ministry of Housing. But for the rent or own that is for payment within the average of 10 years you go to lagos mortgage board the scheme which is practically completed comprises the following infrastructure network of roads car parks external electrification reticulation sewage treatment plant and would soon be commissioned by the governor of the state babajide ulushala sawulu <music> The Lagos State Government recently floated an insurance week to sensitize its workforce to the benefits of getting insured. The Finance Commissioner, Dr. Rabi Oluwo, outlined the theme for the week. It is the maiden edition of the Lagos State Civil Service Insurance Week, themed, If You Can Be Insured, Will Bear the Risk. 
The Commissioner for Finance, Rabi Ulu, addresses workers on the importance of insurance, which is compulsory in the state. He discloses that the Lagos state government has paid more than 2 billion naira on workers' insurance premium this year alone. And I can affirm to you that this year alone we have paid over 2 billion in insurance premium to cover life and non-life. So that speaks to the uh, importance of insurance. During COVID, Lagos State was the epicenter for COVID. Uh, during the civil unrest, Lagos State was the epicenter for um, the answers. We have seen government properties, assets, uh, and in some cases, uh, injuries to uh, our staff and associates. So we have been a real, uh, maybe for lack of better word, we have enjoyed uh, the real essence and value proposition of insurance. And uh, the best we can do is to further our commitment to ensuring that our insurance activities is even much more strengthened. And that is the real reason why we're doing this sensitization and, adv and advocacy. The commissioner also tells the workers that the state has been regular in the payment of their insurance premium, so they can be taken care of during and after your service. Lagos State Insurance Week, starting from today, was conceptualized to underscore the importance of insurance to educate the populace about government's huge commitment and effort in ensuring that our workforce is insured from the beginning of their career in the civil service till their retirement and sometimes uh, in the event of death. The Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Benga Omotosha, represented by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Shino Thorps, earlier in his welcome address noted that insurance is very key to business and the 21st century economy. We cannot run away from the fact that insurance is very vital and is very key to business, especially in the world we are living in now, because the unexpected can happen at any time. And insurance will take care because it's going to be shared risk for all of us. In an exclusive interview with the Greater Lagos Vision, the Commissioner stated that the insurance scheme is an offshoot of the Sowon Luthim's agenda towards achieving a Greater Lagos for all Lagosians. So starting with the team's agenda of Mr. Governor, our effort through uh, traffic management, through health, through environment, all the things that we are doing is anchored on managing risk. And that's why we are holding this one week long sensitization uh, on insurance. And they say charity begins at home. We are starting from the ministry, departments and agencies, so that people can understand the value of insurance. The government, under the leadership of Mr. Babaji De Ulushola Sonwul, I can tell you affirmatively that 100% of our workforce has life insurance, 100%. Most of our properties, assets, because we're still trying to do a lot of improvement in that area. But largely speaking, our assets are insured as well. And we want to continue to do more and more and more and close the gap that we may have end to end. That's exactly what we are doing. Because if we don't manage our risk very well, the team's agenda will not come into fruition. The project, according to the Finance Commissioner, is for the generality of Lagosians, even though it's been kick-started from the ministries, agencies and parties. Our real message is to the public. So when they see us doing it, so we have that moral standing to say, you have to do your insurance as well. Like you have rightly captured, insurance culture is very, very low in the African setting and also in Nigeria. So what we are trying to say is that so many times when there are mishaps, there are you know, um, accidents, maybe uh, fires in markets, everybody comes to government for compensation. So what we are saying is that these are events that we, can, we could have insured against and these settlements and claims will be taken care of by the insurance industry. So government can use its money to build more roads, to build hospitals, to build, um, you know, schools. So it's a win-win for everybody. The Civil Service Insurance Week features lectures and exhibitions that will help civil servants and the public better understand the benefits of insurance. The scourge of begging and destitution on Lagos roads has defied solution over the years. 
the Sowon Lu administration seems poised to crack the nut. A tax force has been empowered to physically remove beggars and vagrants off Lagos streets. As a responsible and responsive government, the Babajide Olushola Sowon Lu administration will not fold his arms and watch the state become a haven for beggars. It will take action to curb this menace. To say that street begging has reached an alarming proportion in Lagos State would just be stating the obvious. But this press conference is to redress this menace once and for all. The beggars are everywhere in Lagos, on the streets, under the bridges, on major roads, in shanties and even in the traffic. They come in different faces, colors, calibers, ages, genders and some with little children. Some of them even pretend to be sick to appeal to public emotion from passers-by who eventually part with their hard-earned money. But the Lagos State government says this trend has to stop and has vowed to eradicate street begging by raw means. A special team has been set up to tackle this menace frontally. The operation of this special team will commence in the next few days. The task we are undertaking is not only to sanitize our society, but also to restore the dignity of this set of people who have been sent onto the streets for arms begging and hawking. The unfortunate thing about it is that there are people who are making money out of this. They have seen it as a business and they are using these kids and some elderly people to go into the street and beg and uh, uh, send them returns uh, every night. And the state government feels that this is dehumanizing. This is not uh, good for our future and it's not going to help anybody. And it's uh, trying to stop it and it's going to stop it. The commissioner laments that begging and hawking have become instruments of insecurity in the state. This has become big business to some groups of people. Our investigation revealed that beggars and hawkers, children and adults, are transported regularly from other parts of the country to Lagos with the sole aim of doing this odious business. These groups of people have turned arms begging and hawking into a huge business by collecting returns from beggars and hawkers who incidentally sleep under the bridges, motor parks, uncompleted or abandoned buildings, and other places not conducive for human habitation. Intelligence reports have revealed that some of these so-called beggars go about with dangerous weapons. They assault and rob innocent Lagosians. Therefore, as a government, we cannot afford to let this continue. The State Police Command is also partnering the state government to reinforce the legal aspect of the development. We have so many times arrested people filled on wheelchair with danger weapons hidden there. Arms, ammunition, cutlasses, and with which they attack people in traffic. <laughs> That's all we have on this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I am Love Ikuku Oyedoku. Bye for now.